In this video, I am going to talk about basic interview questions related to cloud and a few interview questions related to concepts of Pivotal Cloud Foundry also called PCF. So let's start. What do you understand by term cloud? When you work in a cloud native project or you are a cloud native developer, you must understood the basic concept of what is meant by cloud. Cloud is not a physical entity. Cloud basically means vast network of server put in different geographical regions grouped together and operating as one ecosystem. If we want to talk about an example of cloud provider, you can take it as AWS, you can take it as Microsoft Azure, you can take it as Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Moving to next question. What is IaaS called AS, PaaS called PaaS, FAAS called SaaS? AS stands for Infrastructure as a Service. PaaS stands for Platform as a Service and SaaS stands for Software as a Service. As the name suggests, in case of Infrastructure as a Service, the infrastructure that consists of basically networking, storage, servers and virtualizations, these network, storage, server and virtualization are provided by the cloud vendors. Now, in case of Infrastructure as a Service, Operating System, Middleware, Runtime, Data and Application, you have to manage. A very common example of Infrastructure as a Service is AWS EC2. In case of AWS EC2, if you are working on EC2 platform, you have to configure your own server. You need to decide the amount of server computation needed by your project, the firewall settings, etc. In case of platform as a service, runtime middleware operating system including the infrastructure, virtualization, servers, storage and networking are managed by the cloud vendors. Common example is Heroku Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Now you can see in case of platform as a service, you are managing only data, how it is going to be stored and the application itself. One important concept here is, in case of platform as a service, the infrastructure could be anything. It could be any infrastructure as a provider also. So you can use Pivotal Cloud Foundry where the infrastructure is provided by AWS EC2 also or AWS group also. Now in case of software as a service, you are using the application itself. From top to bottom, from application to networking, everything is managed by the provider. For example, Gmail. Gmail is a software as a service example. If you use Gmail, you have to create an account. But how the application is managed, where your data is stored, on which server Gmail application is running, you need not to worry about. So, cloud overall concept in terms of as a service divided basically into these three parts. Moving to next question. Which cloud platform are you using? Any alternate example? So in my experience, I have used Pivotal Cloud Foundry as well as AWS. Moving to next question. Is Cloud Foundry AS or PaaS? Cloud Foundry is basically a platform as a service. So it is a PaaS. Again, just for repeating, platform as a service will provide you the platform needed to run your application. So it consists of runtime middleware operating system, virtualization, servers, storage networking that is managed by the cloud vendor itself. You manage only data and application. Moving to next question. What are the components of 
Pivotal Cloud Foundry or called PCF. In case of PCF, we have routing called router, authentication. There are two types of authentication in PCF, auth to server and login server. Application lifecycle, this include cloud controller, and sync, Diego brain, cell refs, app storage and execution. This include blob store, Diego cell garden, services, service brokers, messaging, BBS console, and ATS message bus, metrics and log metric collector app log aggregator. Now don't worry about the terms used here like Diego cell, cell wraps, garden, and ATS message bus. If you're going for just a cloud native developer, only the concept is going to be asked. But when you're going for a particular specialization like Pivotal Cloud Foundry developer, then you must know the architecture of PCF. And in architecture of PCF, these are the basic components that you need to know. Moving to next question. What is org space? As per definition, org is a development account that an individual and multiple collaborators can use. An org have multiple spaces. Space access to a shared location for application development, deployment and maintenance. Every app service route is scoped to space. Moving to next question. What is router? In PCF, hosted applications runs on containers. In the time of deployment, a route is created for each hosted application to access it from outside of PCF. For example, https byteprogramming.myexample.com In this example, byte programming will be the name of app I am deploying and myexample.com will be the domain name. And this app name and domain name combination is generally a default routing used. You can also customize the way routing or the URL to access the application could be in PCF. Moving to next question. What is build pack? Now this is a very important question. In a PCF interview, the interviewer always asks this question to understand about how much you know about the deployment things internally. Build pack provides you runtime support for application. When you push application, PCF automatically detects an appropriate build pack for the application if not provided explicitly. Detected build pack will examine your application to determine what dependencies are needed and how apps should be configured to communicate with attached resources. Here, attached resources means the services you have bounded to your application through service brokers. Also, it is used for compilation and start of the application. You can also provide build back in manifest file, but this is optional. Moving to next question. What is the difference between start, restart and restaging in PCF? Now this question is very much conceptual and a practical one. It gives the knowledge a candidate passage in terms of working of the PCF. When I say start, means an application is starting for the first time after deployment. So command for start is cf push byte programming dot jar, where byte programming dot jar will be the name of the jar you are deploying. In case of restart, application is stopped first and again started with already compiled droplet. It is done to refresh app's environment. Now here is a new term called droplet. Droplet is nothing but 
the combination of runtime stack, your source code and the build pack. When I say learn to refresh apps environment, there are some strategy in microservice development like a 12 factor app deployment strategy where we put the common changing configuration in systems environment. So whenever we change the environment instead of pushing our code regularly, we just restart the application. Command for restart is cf restart by programming dot jar. In case of restaging, application is stopped first and again compiled with a new droplet and then start. It is done to refresh environment if those changes are affecting staging process. So if you think about the difference of restart and restaging, in case of restart with already compiled droplet, we are restarting. But in case of restage, a new droplet is creating. That means the source code is again compiling with the build pack and the new runtime stack and then starting the application. Command for restage is cf restage byte programming dot jar. If you change the source code of the, your application, you must have to repush the code again. Moving to next question. How do you deploy in PCF? So in case of PCF, we deploy using generally CF push byte programming dot jar. This is a single command to deploy with CLI. But in a real time project, we do have DevOps and what are the things that happens inside DevOps? As an interviewer, I expect that a candidate should know. So let's see what happens when you deploy in PCF. You fired the command cf push by programming dot jar to deploy from the CLI. Now, in case of DevOps, first, when you click the button in Jenkins, your CI is run and once your jar is compiled, your deployment process starts. So first thing is read of manifest file happens. The manifest file is generally is present inside your jar and it should be in the directory of your application. In manifest file, we provide path of the application or in a space where to deploy maybe sometimes username and password also amount of memory that I am allocating for the application application name services to be bounded environment variable build pack name build pack is optional there could be much more things in manifest this is a very simple example so once manifest file is read the first thing happens is a route is created we already have seen how a route is look like. Now, once a route is created, then any external attached resources that are bounded to the application is bounded. So all the services that we have mentioned to be bounded to your application in manifest file, that binding of services happen. After this, an app is uploaded. Now, your source code is uploaded to the PCF. Now after this, an appropriate build pack is detected and again there is a process to detect the appropriate build pack and once the build pack is detected, a droplet is formed. This droplet consists of your source code build pack and the runtime stack needed for the application. Once the droplet is formed, this droplet runs on a container. This container could be Kubernetes inside if you have configured or it could be the default container of PCF called Garden. And your application then starts with a healthy status. If something fails, your application will not start with a healthy status. Healthy status generally means the service is returning HTTP 200 status code. Moreover, CF push by default uses manifest file. So manifest file must be present in application directory. 
If manifest is present in another location, you should provide the location of the manifest file using hyphen F option. But generally, we prefer to include the manifest file in application directory. If you specify any command line option, then manifest value will be overridden by the command line option. What is the use of manifest file in PCF deployment? We already have seen in the previous questions. Manifest file may provide the path of the application from where to pick for deployment. Now this is the most important part of the manifest file where you are mentioning your devops to pick up the jar for the deployment. Apart from this, we can also provide application name, build pack, memory, external services to be bounded, environment variables, etc. Moving to next question. How logs are stored and visualized in PCF? In case of PCF, Cloud Foundry uses log aggregator, which streams logs from app to Cloud Foundry console. Now, how those logs are streamed from app to the Cloud Foundry console, there is a separate architecture inside PCF for logging. So, if we are going as a specialized for private or Cloud Foundry developer, then you need to know those things. You can also forward the logs to third-party systems like Splunk for log segregation and storing. Sometimes we require that we need to segregate the audit logs and the general logs. So we can use a third-party system like Splunk or Logly to separate the logs. You can view logs, trail, filter or even dump it to a file. Now there are separate commands to view logs, trail, filter or even dump it to a file. So on a high level note, always remember a basic commands, whether it is for AWS, whether it is for PCF or whether it is for Git. Command for view is CF logs. Moving to next question. What is service broker? Service broker provides a catalog of services that can be consumed by applications deployed to PCF. For example, these services can be treated as attached resources bounded to application. For example, Redis Cache is a service provided through service broker. Now in PCF, Redis Cache is available in different flavor, large, medium, small. So depending upon the project use, you just need to provide the name of the cache and the size of the cache you need. And in a second, a cache service is available to you that could be bounded to your application. Here is the next set of interview videos that I am planning based on your feedback and the comments. If you need any other new topic, please provide your opinion in comment section and also how you like this video in the comment section or either by hitting the like button. Subscribe and stay notified for more upcoming Spring Boot, Microservice Cloud, Java and REST interview questions videos.